What's up guys? In today's video we're going to be taking a look at how I came up with the design for this gazebo, how I designed it on SketchUp in 3D, and then how I applied for a permit. This is where I'd like to build the gazebo. Currently it is useless space. It's about 500 square feet of dirt. In this entire inspiration exploration, I like to create a Pinterest board and start saving the things that I like. This is already starting to pull towards something I like. Ooh, I really like this. I love those wood lats up on top. I really like the wood, big posts and big beams, lean-to roof. I think that's gonna work well in my yard. I really liked the timber frame joinery. I just, there was something about it and I had a feeling that I would be able to come up with something timber frame, but modern. All this to say that I was sucked into a dark hole of design choices. First thing in design that I had to do was go out and get all of my measurements. If you have a certificate of location, that'll definitely be a lot easier because you'll already have kind of a drawing of your property. What I have here is all of the measurements and everything close to that area. And this is gonna help me out later to really put everything on one drawing. So now that I've shown you all the measurements, we could actually take all of this and recreate it in SketchUp. 28 by 14. I like to use the P tool to push pull. So you click on P, then you click on the face. Now you can go like this freehanded, but I like to type in something. So I'm just gonna type in two for two inches and then press enter. And now you have a two inch uh, piece. It's good practice to always group because if you create one rectangle and then do another one right beside it, they will merge. We can orbit around it. So this tool is orbit and that is letter O. So on the keyboard you hit O and now you can orbit around it. And now I'm gonna use the measuring tape. So letter T and that gives us 14, 28. I'm gonna take this now and just move it on that axis and then on this axis so you see when it turns green or red. I just wanted to take a pause here and mention that I am no expert at SketchUp. I'm just giving you a introduction to how SketchUp can help you. If you wanted to get the plan for free, I'm giving it away to the first thousand subscribers that I get. So let's get back to it. One meter by one meter and the way I do that I just click I'm using the tape measurement so T for tape measurement and now I click and I type in 1M enter so now let's just make sure that we are inside of the group so double click into it and now I'm gonna click on the circle tool and now I could actually use the eraser tool to remove the other shapes I'm gonna press P for the push pull tool and we're gonna delete these sides we're gonna remove the tape measurement lines. And now what we're gonna do, we're gonna create the sidewalk. So now just to visualize it better, we can come here on the side and pick out materials. So we're gonna look for water. The offset tool is very handy for things like the sidewalk. We just wanna have three feet of sidewalk and we're gonna push pull tool two inches and give it a different color. 17, six, 18. So this is gonna be our house wall. So the way I do this is I click here and now I'm just gonna click, I'm not gonna click, I'm just gonna hover over the line and hold shift. And now you see that, that's just making the line go all the way perfectly parallel onto that already created line. I'm gonna do the same this way. I'm gonna do this and now go this way. And now I'm just missing this one here. So I need, once again, I'm gonna line this up from there to there. And now with the line tool, I could once again hold shift and come this way and do the same this way. Useful tool is the hand tool. So you click on H to be able to kind of like drag uh, unlike the orbit that 
kind of just orbits. The hand is really stays at the same direction, but you just drag. So I'm just going to delete anything that I don't need anymore. Like this marking here, I don't need. I'm going to use the erase tool now to remove any extras. So now I just need to take a look at these measurements and then we could actually start building the gazebo. One thing I forgot to mention before is that I reached out to my city and they sent me my restrictions. I have to be within 226 square feet. So now we're gonna design within those restrictions. I'm gonna just mark a line here to get guides. And I think that's what we're gonna try and align ourselves to. We really wanna try and align to the pool. I'm also gonna take this side because I think we wanna be parallel Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start drawing out some posts. I think I just wanna start making rectangles at first, and then after we could start looking into how to make them. I think I wanna go with eight by eight, so I'm just gonna do eight comma eight. Push pull, and we're gonna bring it up 10 feet. So take this and I'm gonna create a component. A component is cool because you can duplicate it and then when you modify one, it'll modify to every single one of them. And now what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna select another color. So to duplicate it, I'm gonna use the move tool. It's this one here. And you can use your M letter on the keyboard as a shortcut. And as soon as I click on that corner, I'm gonna hit option. And now as you can see, it's gonna duplicate it. And now I'm gonna snap it to this side. And now we have four posts. I think now it's pretty important to check if we're uh, within the, the limit. So I'm just gonna do O for orbit. If you don't let go, it still uh, creates that. So R for rectangle. And now I'm just gonna hit here for the rectangle and we're gonna double click into it and click on area selection. That is 200 square feet. We said the limit was 226 square feet. So I think what I wanna do is try and find a good balance between this and this. So this is currently 14 feet. I think we could bring it in a little and then maybe make it wider. And now I should have from this side of the post to this side, I should have 13 feet. That's perfect. 13 times 16, 13 times 17, I had on edge 15 foot four, which means that I could move both of these. Let's try four inches more. So four enter, always holding shift, four enter. And now we should be 16. Okay, so 16 times 13 is almost the limit. And I'm also watching this. So I think the problem if I go 17, these posts will kind of be in the way here. So as we're walking away from the pool, I kind of want to have a, you know, a smooth path because um, I do have a door here in the fence, so I don't want to forget that. I have a door, something like this here. Um, it's not exactly there, but you know, you get the point. I kind of want the flow to be pretty smooth to go into the gazebo and you know, to the pool or, or to the backyard. So you also want to keep that into consideration. So now that we have these lines, we could at least know that we are parallel with the pool. We are uh, four inches away from the lines. And here, I'm actually gonna mark this side and I'm, I'm just gonna hold shift when I see the red line so it stays on it and it doesn't move to other ones. And now you can actually use other corners or edges to snap to. So that pretty much gave us the back line. We have the back line, the front line, and now I'm gonna create a rectangle. So rectangle on the blue axis here. Hit O for orbit, H for hand tool, and now R again, and you see it's still on it. So when, when you get the blue rectangle, now I'm gonna hit 
I'm gonna double click area selection 208. So 208 square feet, I'm good there. I guess one, now we have, you know, more engineering problems. So I think it's pretty common sense. Uh, if you know a bit of construction, 16 foot span, I'm gonna need a massive beam, you know, probably, I don't even know, maybe 14 inch uh, high beam. That would be kind of ridiculous and probably would need a crane to get it up here. So I think to simplify my life, I think 13 foot span for rafters, cause I'm thinking the, the lean to pitch is actually gonna be like this, like this, the slope and the gutter is gonna be near the fence on this backside. So I think that's what I'm gonna try and, and do here. This is where we're actually gonna have to modify these three posts and we're gonna have to click on make unique. So now if I modify this post, it'll modify these three, but not the front ones. this upwards and then I hold shift and now I could actually move over to this corner that is one foot six inch higher I think I like that <clears throat> let's see what the height is from here to here 10 feet I think we want to go less than that let's see what what is this height here now that's eight foot six. Yeah, let's let's do let's do back posts be eight foot. So six inch drop, and then we'll make the front ones be six inch less, which should bring us down to now nine foot six. Nine foot six. Okay, that's gonna be great. Now I guess we could start talking about beams. This is now a seven foot span, so I think we could create now a rectangle like this. Now we're gonna use the push tool and we're gonna do eight inches. And so now it's eight inch by eight inch by 16 make component. We're gonna write beam. I think what we could do actually, because the city permission is from post to post, I think it'd be pretty cool. Also, we saw it in our inspiration. I think it'd be cool to extend this maybe by two feet. Now that's gonna be one hell of an overhang. I like that. And I think I'm gonna do the same. I'm just gonna copy paste it. Wow, that's gonna be amazing. I guess it's time to work on the rafters unless we start working on the joinery. I think I'm gonna finish the rafters and then we'll come back and do the wood joinery. So I did buy this book here uh, that taught me pretty much everything I know about uh, you know, timber frame joinery and timber frame buildings. I actually did buy it after doing all that inspiration research. I kind of fell in love with timber frames, so I figured why not, you know, do my research, buy a book, and now I guess I kind of know how to do that. I'm gonna start creating a rafter. I think the rafters, I'm just gonna create a rectangle here. You can use the arrow keys on your keyboard to select the plane that it's drawing on. I like that, I'm gonna do uh, 13 by eight, I'm gonna go eight, eight inches. So that's 13 by eight, and now I'm actually gonna push this to be three inches. So something else I'm seeing here is that we actually have the potential to increase this and make this maybe also a two foot overhang. So I think that's what I'm gonna do here. And now I'm gonna take this side, and I think because of the fence, here, let's, let's do uh, 16 inches. Let's try that. To rotate something, you gotta select letter Q. And now to rotate, you need to click on which point you want the hinge to be, and then you select what side you wanna rotate. So here, for instance, I could select this one or this one. I think this is the good point to select from. And then you select the other corner, and now we can start rotating downwards. Nope, that did not work out. I'm gonna hit escape to get out of that. That was not right. Something is clearly messing up here. Oh, that's why I said to always group your thing. So I'm actually gonna create a component out of this and this is why it was uh, breaking. I'm gonna call this rafter. Now that I created a component, now it's gonna work well. So now I could actually do this and it works perfectly. 
I think that would look pretty darn cool. What I'm gonna do now is actually cut out these, they're called bird mouth. I'm gonna use the line tool and I'm gonna go right here, intersect with that and draw there. And I hope I'm selected, yes I am. Select it from here now and go all the way here. I'm gonna hide the beam. I'm gonna double click back into the rafter and push pull all that out and that creates the notch. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side Go back here, the little eyeglasses, and unhide all. Now I have one rafter that is perfect. I'm gonna use the M for the move tool, and I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hit this little edge here, end point in rafter where it's touching the beam, and I'm gonna start moving. I'm gonna hit Option on my keyboard. So now it zooms out, and I will zoom in to this side. And now it snaps to the corner here. Don't click away just yet. There's a really cool tool with SketchUp. And as soon as you move something or you duplicate something somewhere else, all we have to do now is hit the slash eight and it creates all the rafters for us. Um, and what's really cool about this is that if you don't like this, now you could just click on slash nine, enter and then maybe slash 10, enter. Uh, and I think I like them being spaced out, so I'm gonna go back to slash maybe seven, and that might be too much. Um, I'm gonna take my measuring tool now and just check the distance, that's two foot six. I only want one by twos on the top, so that's for sure too much. Also, it snows a lot where I live, so I don't want to be risking snow collapsing this thing already that, you know, this looks pretty darn overkill. So I'm just going to redo that again, and I'm going to do slash eight, slash nine. I actually like this more because these line up with the posts, and the middle one actually doesn't get any, but I also would wouldn't mind the middle one getting it. The only thing that's bothering me is this here, how it's not aligning, slash nine. And now we're just gonna check the measurement between these now. So that's, whoa, that's kind of perfect. That's almost two feet apart. Very, very close. Uh, very close to two feet apart, which is kind of great. I like that these ones line up pretty much exactly where we want it. This is a, 20 foot beam. So now what we can do, we can actually come up here and start planning the roof. I'm gonna do one by one by two, 20 feet. Make it a component. We're gonna call wood lot. This corner and we're gonna put it up top here and now we're gonna hit Q to rotate and we're gonna select this and then now rotate down until it snaps to this rafter. Hi, I'm YouTubing. So now what I'm going to do is actually use a one inch spacer. So I'm just going to use the M tool to move. I just realized I made a mistake. I'm going to delete that. I'm going to go back. And once again, I'm going to hit the M letter. I'm using the move tool. I'm going to use option. And now I'm going to type three inches, enter. And before clicking away, I'm just going to do times a hundred. That's amazing. Ooh, that was way too many. Okay. So now we just hit space bar to get the and let's delete here. Let's, let's give them a color. And now maybe we could actually color everything the same. Now we're talking. I wanted to stop here and just mention that I don't think I'm gonna get the result I want by putting these knee braces. I feel like it just looks like a barn and it's not looking as modern as I would have liked it to. Um, obviously, I'm still missing like the wood pegs and stuff. I really like the, the, the roof effect with that light shining through. Um, I'm just not a fan of these knee braces, so I think I'm gonna remove them. Uh, but then we're gonna have to figure out how I could solidify the entire structure. I'm gonna hide the beam. Let's go five inches, five inches up. We're gonna make a two inch tenon. So I'm gonna go three inches and then three inches, which should leave us with two inches, 
Yep. And now I'm just gonna draw a line like this and a line like this. Let's go down five inches and let's go down five inches. Now I'm gonna bring back the beam and I'm gonna hide. But now if I do it to this one, it won't have one yet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hide this and instead of pulling the other ones, I'm actually gonna lift this one up five inches. So I kind of did it the other way around, but they both work. Now I'm just gonna delete the guides and we're gonna bring back the last. Okay, so now if I move this up, I have those, that's perfect. I was debating on keeping the knee braces, but I realized that, you know what, without it, it looks so much better. Um, I think what we're gonna end up doing is actually digging massive deep holes, and we're just gonna figure out a way to cement those in and assemble everything standing. I'm gonna create the mortises. I'm gonna bring down this by 12 inches. Uh, similar to the other one, I'm actually gonna do three inches from there. Let's just make sure we're on the right axis. And we're gonna do three inches from here. I'm gonna have to bring this one back up, 12. So now I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna make sure to do that. So now I have that. Now I'm gonna do another one here. There's probably a quicker way to do this. I just don't know it. So I'm gonna do what I know. Eight by two. And we're actually gonna punch this one through five inches and a quarter. So five and a quarter inch. And now we have a five and a quarter inch socket which is called a mortise. And we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing here. Hide. So I took a few hours and I refined a lot of things. I added a bit more detail and components. I even put, you know, the uh, the wood peg holes that are going to be there. I even added uh, polycarbonate sheets. So this is going to be the polycarbonate sheet, the, the plastic. It's almost like plexiglass. Uh, I also added a board here on this side and the other side and some drip edge, which is used on roofing. Uh, redid the fence and added a few plants there. I also added some lights, so little details but I think now I'm pretty much ready to rumble and get started with this build. Are you gonna watch me build this by myself? Cause that's the plan. If you wanna purchase the design of this gazebo, I have it up for sale, but it is totally free to the first 1000 subscribers because I only have 62 subscribers at the time of this recording. I just remembered at the beginning, I did mention that I was gonna show you the process on applying for a permit. Well, the bad news is that I applied for it and they refused it. So watch the next video on how I actually got them to approve it.